9,295 pounds and only slept in for three nights. Not even used three times, only slept in for three nights. A one owner Wildcat 29 rear kitchen with side patio originally sold right here at Halid RV. Coming back to us on trade. Exceptionally, exceptionally well kept. Part of the reason this thing looks so darn good is it just wasn't greatly used. The other reason is while it spent most of its uh, time in storage, it benefited from an RV cover that you see comes with the RV right there in this just supremely clean pass through compartment. And of course, the signature calling card of this model is that double awning setup where I have one open uh, all the way, one halfway open right now, and this really cool side patio that comes off the kitchen. This is a really hard thing to find in the RV industry outside of toy haulers, and even a lot of toy haulers don't have them. And it's actually the reason you're like, wow, 9,295 pounds, that weighs a lot for a two slide fifth wheel. Well, it's because if you think about it, to fit this whole side patio, the entire roof line has to be extra tall like a toy hauler. So there's a lot of extra construction here, but thankfully, with these Wildcats, they were built like a truck, and uh, they hold up. And we're gonna see more of it inside, but how cool is it that if you want to, you could just pop one of your chairs out here, have a cool little, you know, patio picnic party, and, uh, you know, enjoy some shade with your own outdoor entertainment and even mini fridge so you don't gotta track in and out just to get a drink. This is, <laughs> this is cool. Now I've got the slides open, but with the slides closed, you'll be able to access the bedroom bathroom pretty normally. Like most rear kitchens, when the slide closes, you are going to lose refrigerator access, but you can walk around that kind of peninsula counter there. So, uh, you know, there, there, there's still a fair amount of travel access here. It's just, if you need cold stuff like fridge, you're gonna have to hit the slide button. That's normal in a lot of rear kitchens though. That is a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner up there. Um, that's just what these had stock from the factory, which is nice. You didn't have to pay to upgrade that, so I can say that with confidence. Uh, secondly, this is 50 amp, so if you are interested in a second air, give us a call. We can do all that here at Halid RV, get you some quotes. This uh, is a hide-a-bed sleeper sofa over here. It barely looks like it's been set on, let alone slept on. All the windows are going to open for uh, ventilation and lighting, if you are so inclined. Um, and there's so much light coming in from the side patio, and so I don't have any of the ceiling lights on. It stays nice and light and bright in here. The only thing is, occasionally, that big patio with all the light flooding through might affect my camera. The camera that I happen to be using right now doesn't do so well with those big light-dark exchanges. However, what it does do a good job of is uh, recording things when we take a look at all the stores. So if we open that up, you can see just mega drawers. It's not just a bunch of drawers. They're really big drawers, plus the space below the uh, sink over here as we run up past the solid surface countertops. Because the ceiling's so tall, they had the opportunity to include some huge kind of like mega kitchen cabinet storage. And there's just no shortage on space to put things in here. This one just has no shortage of storage, ladies and gentlemen. Pocket screwed cabinets, hardwood cabinet doors, everything looking really sharp, really rich. I like the light contrast on those countertops. Let me get you over here because I don't think I got the sink cover open as we approach the, what I'm going to call the coffee maker corner. Because, wouldn't you know it, right around the corner, a nice set of household outlets. Stainless sink down below here. And I mean, look at this. That's about as close to factory fresh as a uh, used RV sink, I think, is going to get. <laughs> um, we'll see the privacy shade pulled on that big patio door in just a moment. But first, I want to look up front at the entertainment center and the living area. Now, if you remember, out on the patio currently, one of the two free-floating, rocking, reclining chairs is sitting out there. I hauled it out the door. I'm not a big muscle-bound dude. If I can get it out the door, you can get it out the door. You don't have to, though. If you had some separate chairs you wanted to use just for the patio space, you could. Now, if you're looking at it at a glance, you're saying, oh, man, everything's a neck wrecking uh, view of the entertainment center. But if we get up a little bit closer here to the fireplace and take a little closer look, you see that the TV can pivot out pretty severely for easy viewing from the slide, and the chairs can free float. Not to mention the TV could pivot toward them but more storage all over the place. And then right here next to that big patio, there is this uh, sort of like entry storage console area. And that is where your control panel is kind of hidden away. But if you're noticing, um, if we take a quick look there, you can see that there's a separate stereo. Like we have our TV, 
we have all of our entertainment stuff dedicated locally to the television, soundbar, uh, DVD player, but there's room here if you want to upgrade to Blu-ray or whatever. If you want to plug a Roku stick in the back of the screen, you can do that. It's a nice size TV too. But if you want indoor and separate outdoor entertainment, this one does allow you to accomplish that because this is the house stereo as opposed to the TV stereo. So if you want to just listen to music, there's your Huckleberry right there. You Bluetooth your phone to that or it's AM, FM, you're going to be good to go. If you want, um, you know, the, uh, the, the TV sound, you can turn off the inside speakers and leave this plane outside. So they're giving you an interesting way for a dual zone entertainment system. Moving upstairs here, you actually see bathrooms like this becoming quite popular today. I like the positive latch on that pocket door so it doesn't go banging around. Porcelain foot flush with plenty of hip and shoulder room. That is what I call a fluffy, friendly bathroom. The shower floor is recessed into the uh, decking so that we have a six and a half foot tall upper deck. So you can kind of judge, you know, it's six and a half foot tall to the panels, not inside the bubble. So that might give you a little extra headroom still if need be. And over here you can see kind of like a, almost like a double medicine cabinet. You can, you've got like the shelf space on the left. And then down here below the sink, you've got like normal, I think that'd probably be like toilet paper storage type place down there. So there's a, there's quite a bit going on here. And you probably noted the drunken octopus uh, towel hangers so that if you come back from the beach or hop out of the shower, you want to let your towels air out. You can do that right under the vent fan, which if we are paying attention, you can see the roof vent covers have been installed on this aftermarket as well. So the folks added a cover, added vent covers, barely used the fifth wheel. I mean, there, there's a lot good going on in here. Now, when we walk into the bedroom at a glance, you're going, oh, there's no closet space on this. Hang with me just a moment, because as we work our way down, what's nice, it's wide open and Good golly, Miss Molly, this is super CPAP friendly. Those stands right next to you. If you're claustrophobic, this is a really good one for you. That's a 60 by 80 True Queen, and I can pretty much guarantee that, because if you notice, they swapped this uh, original mattress out for a nice, thick residential memory foam bed, good and squishy. So, you know, it's not like a <laughs> back-breaking wafer of death, like a lot of things come with brand new. Again, it's 50 amp service. If you want to drop a second air in there, we can do that for you here at Halet RV. Just give us a call because we do it all. And if we lift that bed up and take a look at the storage below, you see it's nice and wide open. And speaking of storage, I said we'd come back to the closet space. Let's kind of start up here. If we start to crack things open, you see how there's still a window in that dresser slide, but there's plenty of drawer and cabinet space below it. Now, in the slide-out closet, uh, there's a shelf that can flip up and down if you need more or less dresser space. And down here in the bottom of that compartment, you saw how big and deep that was? That is prepped and ready for a combo washer-dryer, if you are so inclined. I suppose you could, theoretically, if you wanted to, remove the doors and cabinetry and have like a corner dressing room as well. Although, I love that storage. There's no way I'd ever give it up, personally. And... TV hookups across from the bed. Pretty standard fare, but I thought I'd let you know. The cover these folks used has sure done its job because the, the high gloss skin that was on this from the factory is still gleaming, still looking good. No signs of fade, flaking, weathering, etc. Now, the front awning is only halfway open. That's why it's kind of sticking up real funny. I did that on purpose so you can clearly see, you know, you've got two separate awnings. This thing has like full campsite patio coverage. You've got one on the ground and one on the patio. It's really cool that you have them dedicated like that. Uh, previous owners also added those slide awnings. That is a non-factory standard piece of equipment. So they did a bunch of upgrades on this and unfortunately never used it. Now you might be wondering, why didn't they use it? They actually just found it was a little bit bigger than they need. Well, a lot bit bigger. They swapped this out for a 16 foot little single axle Cherokee wolf pup here at Halo RV. They just decided they were gonna tow and go and wanted simple and small and didn't spend a lot of time in the RV like they originally thought they would. Auto leveling is gonna make getting her set and ready simple and easy. This does have a good enclosed underbelly heating package. Wildcat was never zero degree tested in the year that this was built. I can't uh, you know, guarantee what people like to call four seasons functionality. I don't like that phrase, but I know that that's an industry accepted phrase. I think it's probably capable, but they never tested it. So I don't wanna make a promise somebody else didn't. So I guess the best I can say is a really good extended season package. We'll climb up that ladder in just a minute, but first, right next to the spare tire here, 
under the corner of the rear kitchen, there's this cabinet space that you just couldn't get to from the inside unless you like literally crawled through it like a mechanic under a vehicle. Well, Wildcat said, hey, let's throw another of those handy slam latch baggage doors on the back here. And we're gonna open this up to just have all the space that we can down in here. Now, if you're noticing, there's little things too, like the, uh, the countertop supporting. It's all like plywood framed and everything. Even where you're not looking, this was a brand that used good materials where it really counted. The uh, both awnings have LED lighting, by the way. Um, see, obviously they're both power awnings. They're, I, I mean, I think you get the idea there. I just want to take one more second to take a look at this patio space because I love it. Whether you use the inside chairs like I've demonstrated here or the outside chairs, having this thing, it's just so cool. I, you know, and honestly, I think I would leave it open like this. Just, it makes the whole thing look and feel so much uh, more wide open and welcoming. Although, if I had my dog or a, uh, a little kid, yeah, I'd definitely uh, close that front gate. And speaking of which, you might have noticed in the entertainment cabinets, there were these two like light gray tent material looking things. Those are what I call the puppy savers. They actually fill in this gap right here so that my little four-legged furry man doesn't accidentally slip himself off the deck and get himself hurt. Other than just a little storage dust that always works its way under the RV cover, roof looks good. I mean, a quick hose bath would take care of the worst of this right here. Now again, you can see how they had added the roof vent covers. The Camco XLT here on the bathroom power vent fan and then the uh, more traditional camcos, one over the kitchen and one here over the bedroom. So all roof vents have covers applied to them. Seals look good. Everything looks good. Like I said, the only, the, I always try to find something not ideal on any RV that I take a view through, whether it's new or used. The only thing I can find on this one is just that the roof needs a bath. Because other than that, it is all here. Everything that was here from the factory and then some is on this camper. It is sharp, ladies and gentlemen. So give us a call. Halo RV, we do it all. Whether you need hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, RV delivery, or everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.